Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Well, this week I'm in Escondido, California, at the home of Pete Ardema. Now, Pete is known for doing some pretty strange things to engines, like marrying overhead cam Porsche heads to big block Chevys. He also builds some pretty radical street rods, too. Now, Pete doesn't consider himself an inventor. I guess he's more of a mad tinkerer. So let's go down in the shop and look inside the mind of someone who do something like this. <laughs> Hey Pete, how you doing, Hi, man? <laughs> so this this is it, huh? This is it. This, this is the, the the Mad Mad Hatter's workshop. Right, right. Well, these are <laughs> these are uh, pretty pretty insane looking engines. Take me through how the insanity started. Where did it start over here? Yeah, we started with this one about 20 years ago. We uh, I always wanted to build a multi-valve, multi-cam engine, four Why? valve, Why? horsepower, performance, etc. Et they rev higher. You just always wanted right. to do it. You're right. Okay. And uh, this was before Chevrolet did their ZR1. So we bought some Fiero heads from Cosworth, mm -hmm. which is a Fiero's half of a Chevrolet V8. And we uh, machined the heads from scratch, and we uh, made the cams, made the lift, didn't make the lifters, but we got lifted, motorcycle lifters, ordered the block custom built, made the front cover for the chain and all that stuff, tensioners. And we ran it on a carburetor. Uh -huh. um, we kind of, I lost interest in it. Well, it runs, obviously starts. you gained it back. So, so how did you, you went from here to to somewhere else? Right. Once we did that, we said, "Well, we could put a cam on a stock Chevrolet. Okay. Let's make an overhead cam Chevrolet." So we took a small block Chevrolet, bolted this cam box right on top of the head using the rocker studs, made a cam, made two cams actually, put a belt on it, and uh, we've built 50 of them so far. All right. Now the original camshaft is still down in there. Right, but there's no push rods anymore. No, push rods in the bench. Uh, they're yeah. on the bench. Right. <laughs> trash. And and the 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 casings, the the cylinders they go through, the shafts they go through. What are they? They're just the cam is still in there. Yeah, turn yeah. the oil pump and the server. Right. The push rods are gone. There's a whole oil, whole oil line from the lifter, rear lifter hole, up into the cam box for lubrication. Okay. All right. So you're, you're at least using the passage. Right. Right. <laughs> well, so you went from 50 of these, and that sure looks like a Hemi. Is well, it is, it is a Hemi. It's a Chevy Hemi. A Chevy um, Hemi. I had a boat customer wanted an alcohol burning Chevy Hemi. So we, we put the overhead cam on the, on the Aries. They're Aries heads made in LA. Uh -huh. And it's much like the 64 single overhead cam Ford. <laughs> this one over here looks like a work in progress. This, yeah, this is another brilliant idea I had. <laughs> if you do say so yourself. <laughs> it's what, an what FE, it? FE Ford, 394, uh -huh. 27 Ford, Cobra guys. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's going to be a cheapy overhead cam Ford. And I use the stock cam, the stock pushrod cam, I grind every other lobe off. Mm -hmm. Put a belt on it, much like the Chevy. And um, this one's about half done. Wow. All in due time, right? Yeah. Well, it looks like you mess around with bikes, too. Yeah, it's another deal. But I got a Bonneville. Oh, okay. Bonneville engine. <laughs> All right, let's look at the Bonneville engine. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Okay, so this one's going to Bonneville, eh? Yeah, this is our D motor, 300 cubic inch, small block Chevrolet, overhead cam. What are you trying to get out of this for horsepower? We want over two per inch, 600 horsepower out of this. 600 horsepower. Oh, you gotta love that. So what all you've, have you done? You made the cam, didn't you? Made the cams. These are the best GM heads made up until the time we got them. There are no push rods here anymore, mm -hmm. and that in, in allowed us to uh, enlarge the ports. So it can breathe. Right. And we've, we got the same thing under here, basically? We've got the same thing. We're mocking this up now. It's not uh, It's not, not done yet. We, we're not using adjusting screws. We're using lash caps. We grind the lash cap to the proper thickness to get the adjustment. This cam will turn backwards through a gear drive off the front of the engine, uh -huh. off a boat so that they attack the rockers in the same manner. Both rockers hit the cam in the same way. Pretty, pretty cool. Now you've got, uh, you got a land speed record car, We've got right? a Model A with a record. Well, let's go look at it. Okay. Well, uh, this is a mean looking little machine, Pete. What do we have here? This is a Model A Bonneville car. It belongs to Doug Air. It's one of the oldest salt cars, Bonneville cars still running wow. today. It doesn't look much like a Model A. Well, the rules say Model A block. Okay, so it's a Model A block, but you've done a little bit of work on it. That's about the only thing that's Model A. The, uh, it's got two Subaru heads welded together front to back wow. with new Snyder cams, Crower crank, Crower rods, 
Four, Jamie Pistons. Four valves per... Four valves, twin cam. So are those like WRX heads? They're WRX heads, yes. Oh, those are mean machines to begin with. So. Right, right. They're good heads. The best head you can get, uh, it's a two-cylinder head, and the Model A is two and two, two side by two with a big gap in the middle. So that's why you had to mate them, right? Right, right. Oh, so what did it do on, on the uh, dry lakes? At, at El Mirage, on our very first run, it went 150, the record. We got the record by two miles an hour. We missed the record at Bonneville last year, but we're going to go back this year for it. Go after Missed it, it by a mile an hour. Wow. Burn a valve. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, does it run? Can you fire it up? Sure, or? sure. Yeah, I looks, think it'll start. It looks pretty strong. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, now, Pete, I, I know you've got cars with bodies on them. I've, I've seen them. What do you say we go look okay, at those? Okay, sure. Let's go. You know you're insane, right? You know you're completely insane. No, no. It's everyday stuff. <laughs> Welcome back to My Classic Car. Pete, let's uh, start here with your primer toy. <laughs> what do we got here? 34 Ford, but not stock. No, it's, um, it's a big block Chevy block. Uh-huh that I ordered from Nick Aries, and I put the Porsche heads on it, 928 Porsche heads. And what Nick did for me, he moved the bore centers in, 30,000, so the difference between Porsche and Chevrolet. Uh -huh. And then he put the Porsche bolt pattern in the block, so I, it was a bolt together deal, Un simple. Unbelievable, now that's gotta be easier than a lot of your other projects in the past. Yeah, well, the, I've done a few belt drives on the other engines, the overhead cam engine, so it was fairly easy. That, that's, it's got that's a, great. It's got a 427 crank in it, scat rods, and uh, Chevy and it's, pistons. It's an aluminum block? Yes, it's all aluminum. Heads, block, everything's aluminum. It looks really mean. What kind of power does this baby put out? It makes 550 pounds of torque at 2,500 and about 500 horsepower. <laughs> and what's the running gear? It's, uh, I found a 2,000 Corvette transaxle, six speed, standard shift, and I mounted it in the rear. I narrowed it five inches. So it, it's a C5 Corvette? Right. Wow. All new Corvette. And so you had to take her down five inches. Right. To, the Corvettes are so wide and the 34 so narrow. Yeah, you'd have the wheels wheels sticking out, out sticking yeah. out. So then I, when I ordered the body from Steve's Restoration, I ordered this panel an inch and a half wider right in here. Oh, so you still had to grow the body. Right. To get the tires under the Even after taking the rear end down five inches, you still had to bring yeah. the body out. Wow. Right. And of course, you know, because the trans and everything, this is your shift linkage here? Right. Man. Can you fire up? Sure. Man, oh, oh nice. Starts right up. Some serious growl. Oh man, this thing's, this thing's got to be a ball. It is. It's a ball to drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, shut her down here. Now this is, again, this is your primer toy. You can take this out. You can beat it. You can do burnouts and donuts right. and have a great time. But let's go over and look at the one that you finished a little more okay. finely. Sure. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Pretty uh, sweet little 37 here, Pete. Thank you, Dennis. Man, now we know from earlier that you moved the engine from the front to the back. But can right. we look under the hood anyway? Sure. I just, I just feel like I have to look under the hood. But there's not much to see, is there? No, we've got a radiator, <laughs> a 20 gallon gas tank, dual brake sonars, the battery sits right behind the radiator. Now this has got to freak people out when you're at right. a show or something right. like that and you open this up and I mean, you could put a cooler in there, I guess. Yeah, cosmetic case. Uh, cosmetic case, yeah. Well, close her back up. Now, you were telling me that you built this actually as a removable hardtop so you could get to the engine more easily, right? Right, right. Can we pull it off? Sure. Right, I'll go on the other side. Now, is it is this a fiberglass top or? Oh, this is the original this steel top. This is the original top steel top. You just cut it and, okay, here we go. Car. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Yeah, I'm surprised it's not heavier. It's original steel it's the original top steel that came top, with yeah. the car. Ah, oh, great. Love the interior. Thank Very you. Very nice. Who did that? Rod Lingard, a friend we met in Australia, came over and spent three months with us and did this here at the house. Got an um, aluminum dash that I uh -huh. made, covered it with leather, Lexus seats. It's got a flat floor. And because you were able to move the engine to the back. Right, right no transmission hump. The steering column is up off the ground. Those are both things that are kind of rod or nemesis. Aren't right, they, you know, the right. hump and then the, the steering column going right down there. Right, and that's one of the reasons I put the engine in the back to give myself more room up front. Oh, it's, it's, Plus, I love tinkering, and, <laughs> and and that's pretty obvious. 
Now, this this little back seat here, uh, is just your, your spare? Or? Yeah, that's a beer cooler or a granny <laughs> seat. Uh, and this is hiding the engine? engine hatch. It's got vents on the side, one on this side. Yeah, what are those? This one sucks air into the engine compartment. Yeah. And the other one on the right sucks air into the carburetor. So it, it sucks air in, and, and what's this little guy? This pops open when I start it up. Oh, that's nice. And what does that actually do? That lets the air out of the engine compartment. And then when you turn it off, she goes back down. Isn't it's, that cool? Gosh, well, let's, let's look at that engine. Okay. Which has us walk in this direction. It's, it's, it's hard to get used to this, Pete. I'm used to it, Dennis. <laughs> wow. Okay, take, take me through it. What do we got? Okay, it's an aluminum Donovan small block with one of my overhead cam kits on it. And then how about, what, what's the transmission? It's a Tornado transmission with a homemade transfer case we made down in the shop. These are the springs. We made our own A-arms. It's got all stainless steel exhaust, air conditioning. What you've got is basically a mid-engine 37. Is that right? Right. Now, what caused, I mean, did you just dream this up? Where'd this come from? I love tinkering, that's obvious. And I wanted a, a good transmission which would handle some horsepower so I could go fast. And this is what I came up with. Do you work off drawings or do you just kind of, you just go to the shop and whip stuff up? Well, it all starts from the wheels and goes backwards. So once you, once you establish the wheel position, then it's easy. Everything else just right. rolls, huh? Right, mm -hmm. Both roadworthy. Right, very roadworthy. Streetable. Yeah. Well, what do you say we go out and do some road work? Yeah, let's go. Now, I tell you, you know, that one doesn't have a windshield. It's going to mess up my mustache. How about I do this one? You take the red one. All right. Close her up? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Oh, beautiful. So you ready? Yeah, let's go. Let's ride. It's my first mid-engine 37. This car is great, but Pete's got the one that's fun. Primered, take it out, kick it, have a good time. That's what it's all about. You gotta admit, he, he builds some pretty mean machines. Hey man, how fast is that thing? You just can't beat this. I think I can take him on the inside. Oh, maybe not. That works. <laughs> of course, I'll behave myself. <laughs> so until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring.